Am I recording? Uh, yes. Yeah, okay. okay. Good morning. Today is uh, Thursday, December the 9th. Okay. Today we're going to just uh, complete the last details of the of the of this chapter. Uh, the things that are, are missing, basically, is something that uh, some groups have already more or less uh, deduced from the previous uh, two sub-chapters. But anyway, I'm going to formally present it today. It's about how to transform distribution of forces into equivalent forces in the joints, since this is a discretization process. And then I would like to see if there is any problems with the completion of this uh, project. Okay, uh, so uh, I'm going to work. I'm going to give you some time with the with each group, and then at the end there are going to be some closing to see if there is any final final uh, questions about about it. Okay, so more or less that's the agenda for today. Uh, yesterday, I have the visit of some of you, which was really, really nice, nice surprise. And uh, uh, well, I guess that, that's something that we already know that uh, when we have um, direct in-person uh, communication, uh, these things are different. I don't know if you do not agree with me or not, but uh, in general, that's that's my impression. That when we talk and we see to each other's eyes, it's it's make a big difference, right? So uh, it was really nice. But I understand we still have restrictions, so not everybody can do it. But anyway, I, I really enjoy it, and uh, I hope those who came to my office also enjoy it the visit. Okay. Um, so let me share. Okay, I'm going to share the screen here. Can you see my PowerPoint uh, screen, people? Genesis? Yes, doctor. Okay. Okay, thanks. Okay, so uh, so this is the general agenda for the whole thing. And we are back here in point five, trying to uh, use this implementation that we have available in Logan's book to solve these plain stress problems. Okay, um, this is discretization. This is a difference. Yesterday we have a nice conversation about this. We are talking about plane stress, the right hand side. Okay, uh, somebody was uh, interested in knowing how, what happened if we have a compression force. We know that if we have compression, it might occur that we will have some buckling. But no, in this in this uh, in this um, chapter or in this course, we do not work with uh, buckling. Buckling is is the first level of nonlinearity. So this is above uh, what we want to do in this class. In this class, we work at the linear level, completely linear level. So even if you have a very high compression force, we consider that buckling does not occur. Okay, so that's that. Uh, also, uh, somebody was worried about what happened if we reach a yield point or elastic uh, limit. Nothing happens because our analysis is linear. So we assume that the slope expressed by the Jung modulus uh, keeps on with no limit. So if you apply an extremely large force, doesn't break. Why not? Because we consider that the, our analysis is in the elastic uh, range. So E, the John modulus, 
is the same. Okay, so that's linear analysis. What else? Um, then uh, we deduce compatibility. Okay, and uh, more than uh, solving compatibility, okay, uh, we used, uh, if, you, if you want to solve buckling, then what you have to do is remember that buckles means a play buckles means that you have lateral deflection that's bending. So when you work with buckling, what you have to do is you have to work with compatibility equation that's in the in plane plus the uh, the bending plate equation, the plate bending equation. That you have to consider both. So it's it's uh, anyway. And uh, this is just to review because all of these relations, we need them for, for our analysis in this chapter. This is the classical definition of strain, normal, shear. This is the classical relationship between strains and stresses for a, an isotropic material. This is something that you saw, that you studied in solid mechanics, in shear structure. This is the third time you're working with these relations. So you better keep those in your memory, okay? So it's, it's always a good idea. Uh, if we put this matrix on the other side, this is what we obtain. So uh, it's, you get confused. So please be careful, okay? So this is sigmas and this is epsilon, okay? This matrix here is what we call the D matrix, okay? And you see that we are including only three elements of the, uh, of the stress tensor. The other three, sigma z, tau xz, tau yz, are neglected in this case. We consider that those are zero. And now, since this is a, an equilibrium, a static uh, problem that we are solving, we say that uh, forces in every direction has to cancel. So this is the equilibrium and we simplify and this is what we obtain, okay? In the X direction, this is in the Y direction. And uh, this is very common. Remember, this is something that you deduced in uh, solid mechanics. So this is the three equations, okay? Now, the problem is that, is that these three equations are defined using only two functions, which is u and v, the displacement in the x and in the y direction. That's, that's a problem. That's why we need a compatibility to, to force the relations to comply, to be compatible with the strains that they produce. Okay. Uh, this is typical of this type of problems. Um, we introduce the 80 stress function. There are several ways that people uh, write or spell this, this name, but this is, I think, one of the commons, okay? Uh, 80 stress function. So this is the way it is defined. This is very strange because when you define a function, I expect to see something like phi, that's the function that I'm defining, is equal to something. In this way, we define it in a different way, but it's it's a definition, okay? So if we introduce this in the equilibrium equation, they are completely satisfied. So if we accept these definitions of sigma x, y, and tau x, y, we don't have to worry about equilibrium. They are identically satisfied. So in, 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 that means that we don't have to worry about that. We have to worry about another equation. And that another equation is specifically the compatibility equation. And, and the idea is that we force these two functions, u and v, to satisfy this relation because there is some uh, mismatch between the number of displacement functions too and the number of strains that we have to obtain in order to satisfy equilibrium. Okay, so this basically is like another equation to make these things be compatible. And this is just an identity. We assume that U and V are uh, 
differentiable and continuous function, continuous and differential function. So if this is dux, this is dvy, we differentiate in this way, and this has to be like this. And the only thing that we have done is we have changed the order of the differentiation. That's it. But we can identify or can interpret this du dx as epsilon x, similarly for this and similarly for that. And also we have assumed that they are in, we are in the elastic range. So this could be given as in function of sigma and sigma y, okay? Similarly for the uh, gamma xy. Once we do this, we can replace into here, we make cancellations, and this is what we obtain. Okay, so if you want to solve uh, this type of problems, plain stress problems, this is what you have to solve. This is a fourth order equation for the compatibility between U and V. They have to be consistent with the strains. Okay, now we switch to uh, discretization, finite elements, okay? So instead of you going in this direction, what we have to do is we are going to apply a energy method. That's why we presented in, in shift structure, the very first idea about uh, energy, okay? Uh, uh, one of the very interesting things about this chapter is that it introduces the more general idea that you will find in the real world. Okay, so far we have worked with this type of elements. So this point moves to the right or in the vertical direction, similar for this one. But in the general world, this point can move to the right and also upward. So we have to keep track in this chapter of two displacements. In the general uh, world, you have to work with three displacements, U, V, and W. But you have a general idea how these things can be done, okay? So we have to be alert that we have to keep track of interpolation, two functions, U and V. But we use the same interpolation schemes for both. Okay, we're going to employ triangular partitions. So because this is simplest, it's the simplest element for this type of problems, okay? So uh, we're going to have three conditions to get the, or to define the polynomial for interpolation, okay? So we're gonna use a constant plus constant X plus constant Y, because we can uh, determine these three constants satisfying or evaluating this polynomial in each one of the three joints. We could find, we could try to find a more complex uh, interpolation schemes. For example, we could try, and it's been used, you could try it using, for example, not only the, the, the joints at the corners, but you could also include another corn, another joint, for example, in the central point of each side, in that case, you will have six conditions. So you could use six constants for the polynomial of interpolation. And of course, that's gonna give you some curvature, okay, for the interpolation. Of course, it, it's more complex, but it's more efficient. But uh, yeah, some, some, some people think that uh, instead of going to that uh, complex uh, interpolation, it's better instead of using this triangle, just put another join here and make a, a smaller uh, triangular elements and you get a, a, a similar approximation and a much simpler uh, finite element approach. Okay, so that, that's something that you should have in mind. This is the simplest case. Um, so this is the interpolation that I mentioned, constant, constant, constant. And these are the uh, restrictions that this interpolation scheme has to satisfy, right? If you evaluate this in this point, in this point, and in this point, you have to recuperate the value of the function in those three joints, okay? So 
this is the way we uh, make this uh, discretization. Okay, so we assume okay the way it behaves the function inside each element okay and instead of trying to find this function we try to find only three in this case three values okay that's a discrete number for every joint of course if you add all the joints in the in the structure there's a lot of joints i know but still it's a discrete number okay instead of trying to find a continuous function Continuous, discrete, discretization, okay? So we could go on and evaluate each one of these, uh, this, this, evaluate this function in each one of these three joints. And we can express this in this way. So these are the, the constants we try to define, to, to find. Uh, this is the result of evaluating each one of these uh, uh, this uh, uh, evaluating this function in each one of the three joints. So this is the equation that we have. So we take this matrix, put it on the right-hand side, and then what we can do is we can identify everything which is multiplied by ui, everything which is multiplied by uj and phi uk. And each one of these functions is what we call ni, nj, and nk. And they have this form. You can identify, this is something that we did for the bar, for the beam, and now for the plane, plane stress element. So you can go on, you can try to do something like this for a solid, for example. And in that case, you're gonna have eight joints, right? So you could use a polynomial, which includes eight terms. But in that case, you have to include variation is in, in X, and Y and in Z. So it's it's gonna be a little bit more complex, but yes, that's that's something we can do in those cases. Um, and here, well, not here in the in the PowerPoint that I gave you, you have the details of these uh, polynomials. Okay, uh, these polynomials depends on X and why it's a combination. You don't need to learn them by memory because if I, I want you to apply these polynomials, I'm going to give it to you. So I would like to check if you know what they mean. But also I can ask you, how do you get this? So you have two ways to be alert. So you, you have to know where I and mean, how I reach this point. And also, you need to know, if I give you this, how are you going to use it in order to analyze with finite elements? Okay, people, uh, this is, I know this is a short summary for many things that we have done so far. Is there any questions about this? Any question, please? Any question? No question, good. Okay, so um, the last thing that I would like to do is uh, in a similar way as we did in the, in the case of um, beams and bars, okay? We could have a distribution of forces and we have to convert that into equivalent concentrated forces applied in the joints. That's what we need to do now, okay? And that's, that's going to be the end of this subchapter. Okay, so uh, um, let me put the, the date here. It's December 9th, just to be able to check later on. So today I would like to. Uh, um, convert distributed forces into concentrated or joint 
courses. Uh, they shouldn't say convert, should say conversion. Oh, okay. Now we are. Okay, so uh, we want, for example, let's suppose that we have a triangular element like this. Okay, we have a reference system here, x, y. And let's suppose that we have a force distributed like this. Okay, and what we need to do is we can, we need to convert this into the same element, but now instead of having distributed force, which we do not know how to include in our, in our calculations, right? Because in finite elements, remember, we worry, we worry about equilibrium of every joint, not what happens in between joints. So what we need to do is take this and convert into equivalent force, equivalent force, equivalent force, and let's, let me put it like this. Okay, so these forces will be applied in the joints. And you know how to take those and input it into the global system of equilibrium equations, right? And go and proceed. So how do we do this? We use the potential energy approach, okay? So let's apply a potential energy of external forces. In, in the same way as we did at the beginning of this chapter. Okay, so um, the potential energy, we call it V, uh, VE, I think. Uh, so let's remember the potential energy. Remember, is equal to the integration, okay? This is a line integral because we are considering that we have a, dis a linear distribution uh, from zero to L. That means that we integrate it along the edge where we have this distributed force. And here we have, for example, force per unit length in the X direction and each one of these points multiplied by dx that give you a force. Okay, so this is force per unit length, and multiply by dx that give you the force in this little piece. And we multiply that by u, and that's uh, it's it's a function of x and y, and this is in the in each element. So this is for one element. Okay, so in this case, we are considering only the X component. If you have components in X and Y, you have to do it for both directions, and then at the end, you just put the whole thing together. Okay, now, again, this is something uh, that we did before. So we, read, we write in a similar way, as we did, with beams, okay? We express U in one element, okay? This is for one element, but only U, okay? So we express it as if a, this is a, a row, and we put here UI, UJ, in UK. So these are the displacements, okay, uh, of the three joints. And when you multiply that by NI and J, this is I, I'm sorry, this is J, and this is K. This is the interpolation scheme that we have used. 
So what we do is we replace this into here and we proceed to integrate. Okay, replacing for one element. So we have VE. So this, okay, doesn't depend on X or Y because these are the values of the, of the displacement at the joints. That's something that they, that they are not function of X because this is values at, of the function at the point. Now, we do not know, we do not know them yet, but they are constants. They are constants which are unknown. So I think instead of this, I think we put it, we could put it like this, okay? This, because these are the displacement of the joints and this is a vector. If you transpose that, we get it, and uh, a row. So we proceed with the integration in the line where this distributed force is applied and we are left with this. So we get F of X. See, we are saying that it, it can vary. And also we multiply by this vector, which is an I dx. So basically, the result of this is going to be what? It's going to be this. So this is a row. And this, the result of this integration is going to be a vector. So we call it, these are the forces equivalent in the joints for the element. Okay, so. What we have to do is we have to produce this operation. We have to develop this operation. And the result of that, this is a scalar, this is a vector. The result of that is, is going to be a vector. And these are the, the, the values that we're looking for. Okay, let me go back. So these uh, forces here are the values that we were looking for here. Now, I have explained in the X direction, you could do something similar for the Y direction, okay? And we have to remember that for the Y direction, instead of U, you have multiplied by B, but the N, polynomial N are the same. So I'm going to write it down, but it's just a, basically a copy of this, okay? We can do the same operation for the y direction. So you can say that VE in that case is going to be, uh, let me let me put it the other way, okay? So let me put it like this. So I'm going to put VI, VJ, VK. So are the displacement in the vertical direction of the three joints. So the integration of F, Y, and the, the, this vector is the same, exactly the same as before. So we integrate along the same edge. This is the same. The only thing that we have to do is we have to take the corresponding function for Fy. And the result is going to be exactly the same, this vector times this vector. So it's going to be Fy for the element. People, any questions about this? I guess uh, we should include here Subindex X. There. Now, let's go on. Let's present a little more detail about this operation. Now, we know these functions. Okay? These are alpha I plus beta I X plus gamma i j, okay? And we know that 
Let me try to draw a 3D diagram here. This is X. No, let, let me do this. Because in, in, if I do it in one single uh, scheme, I'm going to get confused. So I'm going to draw an I, N J and N K in these diagrams. This is X and this is Y. Okay, so I'm going to draw, let, let's suppose that uh, I'm going to draw N X and N I, N I, N J and N K uh, for this element. It's a simple element because it's it's kind of difficult to draw in the in this in the in the space. So it's the same it's the same element. Okay, it's the same element, but in here I'm going to draw an I. So let's call this this is the J the I uh, joint. This is the J and this is the K joint. The same for the others. So I'm going to draw here with blue an I. Okay, so an I has to value here one. And in here, in here, it has to value zero. Remember, that's the interpolation scheme. And also, this is a linear polynomial. So the result is going to be that if I need this to value here, zero, uh, I'm sorry, one zero here and zero here and be a plane, the only way that this can be drawn is something like this. This is Ni. Similarly for Nj, okay, I'm gonna have one here and it has to be zero here and zero here. So it has to be like this, like this. And we know that inside the element, okay, the function is linear. So this is a plane. So along this edge, this is a straight line. For this one, something similar. Let me change color. Let me just use uh, green. So we have one here, has to value zero here, zero here. So we go like this. And this is a straight. Okay, again, you see that in this edge, in this edge, which is the edge where I'm going to apply the load, for example, you see that it is zero. Along this edge is a straight line and a straight line. Okay, but this, this one is zero. So that means that the first value here in this, in this force is going to be zero. So if I apply, a distributed force on this edge. There's not going to be any concentrated equivalent force in this, in this joint. Makes sense? I guess so, right? If I apply a distributed force along this edge, okay, I'm going to say, I'm going to take some force in this point, some force in this point, and no force in here. Makes sense to me. Okay, so we're, we are good. Now, so to integrate along this edge, okay, and along this edge, we have to go on and uh, evaluate that. And this is a straight line, see? This is a straight line. And also this is a straight line here. But the difference is that here I go from one to zero, and here I go from zero to one. So let's uh, go on with the integration. So, uh, along the edge, JK, where we will apply the distributed force Okay, so we have along that edge Okay, uh, let me go here. So I, I'm going from, from joint J to joint K. 
So here I have joined J. And here I have joined K. In general, I'm calling this S. Uh, and here I have an I. This is general. So uh, let's, let's call it an M. So again, I'm going to use the same colors. Blue with blue. So this is the variation of an I. Is zero. The other one, this is NJ. It goes from one to zero along this edge. Okay. So it goes from one to zero. That's NJ. And finally, in uh, green, I think you go from zero to one. That's NK. So as, as we see here, ni is zero. So the integration of that produces nothing because it makes sense that we have no, no concentrated force in a third joint. So you're gonna have concentrated force in one of the two that limit the, the side of the triangle where you're applying the load, makes sense. Okay, so here, this is very simple. We can say that uh, if this is the length of the element, Okay, we can say that Ni is identically zero, and J, okay, so we go uh, from here to there, so it's going to be uh, one minus S over L, and then K, okay, is this one here, is going to be simply S over L. And you see that these are lines, straight lines. And this one here, when S is equal to zero here, so if this is zero, so N and J is equal to one. And on the other side, when S is equal to L, this is one minus one, that's zero. So that's this point. And it is, since it is on a straight line, it goes from here to there. Similar for this one. You start in zero, and when S is equal to L, this gives you one, so it ends up here. So all, the only thing that you need to do now is just to uh, set up or express the distribution of the force, okay? Distribution of the force, this one here, we have the N and you have to integrate, okay? Uh, we can do a, a very simple example when we return from the, uh, from the, from the first break. Okay, people? Any, hold your questions when, for, for the moment that when we return, okay? So let's stop here. Uh, let's see, stop recording.